Wagner's Ring Cycle is a 15-hour epic. Here's the story in two and a half minutes. Alberich the Nibelung has a very powerful ring made of gold stolen from the Rhine Maidens. He's only just started playing with it when Wotan, King of the Gods, comes along and steals it to pay off his castle in the sky. He previously offered his sister-in-law Freya as payment, but the family was unimpressed, so he had to go to her back. Alberic, understandably annoyed, curses the ring, death to all who possess it. Sure enough, as soon as the builders, a pair of giants called Fasolt and Fafnir, get their hands on it, Fafnir kills Fasolt and takes off with the ring. The mysterious Erda materialises and warns Wotan to be careful, but Wotan's distracted by his shiny new palace and he and his family head across the Rainbow Bridge to Valhalla. Next time we see the gods, there's trouble brewing. Freaka, Wotan's wife and goddess of marriage, is appalled by events on Earth. Sigmund and Siglinda have run away together. Two problems, their brother and sister, and Siglinda's already married to Hunding. They're also Wotan's children, but not Freaka's. Sig Sigmund has no tongue, a sword Wotan left for him in a tree in Hunding's hut. Too bad, says Frieka, Sigmund must die. Wotan reluctantly agrees, but he has nine other daughters, also not Frieka's, and their ringleader Brunhilde like every daughter knows better than her father. She tries to save Sigmund and fails. Wotan is livid. He banishes her to sleep on a fiery mountaintop until a fearless man wakes her up and claims her as his wife. There's one bit of good news though, Sieglinde has survived and she's carrying her brother's child. Now, the child is important, the god's days are numbered, and while Wotan has accepted this, he's afraid the whole world will end if Hagen, Albrecht's dastardly son, gets the ring. The gods need a hero, but one who's never heard of the gods or been helped by them. Poor orphan Siegfried, raised but unloved by Albrecht's brother Mima, fits the bill. Mima has other ideas. He'd like Siegfried to slay Fafner, now a dragon, and snatch the ring. Siegfried, always happy to stab something, reforges Notung, dispatches the dragon, then kills Mima too before Mima kills him. What next? A little bird tells him keep the ring and head for the mountain. There's a lady waiting. En route, he meets an old man. We know it's Wotan, but Siegfried doesn't. He's spectacularly rude, breaks Wotan's spear, and charges up the mountain to wake Brunhilde. Wouldn't you know it? Love at first sight. She should have kept him there. No sooner does Siegfried set off exploring again than he's drugged by Hagen at the home of Gunther and Gutruna, siblings who share a mother with Hagen. Siegfried forgets Brunhilde, falls for Gutruna, and when they send him back to the mountain, disguises Gunther to kidnap Brunhilde, he's happy to oblige. Brunhilde doesn't go willingly, and she's angrier still to discover that Siegfried was involved. A little manipulation from Hagen, and now Hagen, Gunther, and Brunhilde are all bent on revenge. Hagen delivers the fatal blow, and everyone else immediately regrets it. Especially Brunhilde, who finally takes the advice Wotan was given at the start. She returns the ring to the Rhine, and in the process throws herself on Siegfried's funeral pyre. The Rhine floods, Valhalla burns, and Earth makes a fresh start without the gods! Get it? Got it? Good! So, now you know the story, come and hear highlights of the music. <laughs>